you're no good. Heartbreakers, you're liars, and y'all some cheats. And I don't know why. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental health with me, your host, Khadija. I'm going to get right into this story because um, I was getting ready to do it when I just found out that the sister in Texas, I think Fort Worth, was gunned down in her house. Another black woman by a, by a police officer inside of her home, minding her own business, playing video games with her nephew, and was gunned down. I can't do that story right now. And I can't even um, wrap my mind around it. And for those of y'all good white people who uh, know that you see injustice, because injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere. And if you got to address it, and if you don't, then that means you stand for evil. Those details, I don't even want to get into yet, because I'm the story I was about to bring was just as ridiculous. As a lot of y'all know, it, the city of Milwaukee Police Department, which is one of the most racist police departments in the country, I was responsible, a part of a team that called in the federal um, process, the federal government to come and look at Milwaukee and its practices in terms of its citizens, especially black people. And I think that um, we only... Uh, maybe second to Los Angeles as being one of the most corrupt police departments that it is. And so as a lot of y'all know that the police beat up Sterling Brown, Shannon Brown's brother, who was uh, formerly married to singer Monica. Um, and uh, the most ironic thing is the Bucks have some new owners within the last maybe five, six years. And when they came to this city, the first thing they noticed was how racist it was. And they made mention of it. A lot of people got very upset with the new owners because they weren't that kind of white men. They they were fair white men. They were they were white men that 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 were human. That's what they were human. Um, just like the human that was working with Meek Mill that owns the Philadelphia Eagles and the Seventy Sixers, and when he saw the injustice that was done to Meek, and really see how the criminal justice system works. Then he took his power and his privilege and he made something happen. And I really appreciate the attorney that Sterling Brown has, and only because he can afford him. But somebody is calling Milwaukee's police racist ass police department out, just like all the rest of these racist ass police departments all throughout America that have got their origins in slave patrolling and slave catching. And until we understand that, we're not going to be able to deal and dismantle the problem. Because all of these departments need to be dismantled, torn down, and you got to figure out a different way of policing. Because you cannot continue to police black people like this and continue to think that we can pay for a police force, pay taxes for a police force to brutalize us. That got to stop. And by any means necessary, that has to stop. So I'm going to share this with y'all. And what it says is um, the findings, uh, they violated his constitutional rights. New court filings in Sterling Brown lawsuit detail past officer misconduct. NBA players lawsuit against the city has found one Milwaukee police officer thought that he should have used more force during the controversy or arrest while the other has a history of being investigated for misconduct. Attorney Mark Thompson, who represents Sterling Brown of Milwaukee Bucks, filed a 30-page motion this week to throw out the city's offer to settle the player's civil rights case for $400,000. They knew they violated his constitutional rights. The city attorney calls it mere errors, Thompson said Thursday at a news conference at City Hall describing the offer as a Jim Crow settlement agreement where you continue to hide and gloss over the constitutional violations. There you go. There you go. That's a real attorney. 
His remarks prompted a sharp response from attorney Grant Langley. All of y'all who are able to vote, when it's time for Grant Langley, the city attorney, to come up, he's got to be replaced. Grant Langley has got to be replaced, okay? Now, I'm seeing his name on too much bullshit. He's got to be replaced. Who denied ever calling the officer action mere errors? He's a lie because he's a racist. And called for Thompson to apologize to the Common Council and Mayor Tom Barrett for the Jim Crow remark. I wish he would. I wish he would. For telling the truth? Obviously, there are errors by police on the scene that night because some were disciplined. But whether or not those errors arise to constitutional violations of Mr. Brown's rights are a matter for the jury to decide. I'm not prepared to admit that. The starting point for any settlement, Thompson said, is that the city admitted to those violations. On Tuesday, Brown authorized him to propose a confidential settlement offered to the city addressing all the issues and the city has not yet responded. That proposal in terms of money contained the same figure that already had been presented and rejected by the Common Council, uh, Langley said. The only thing he can recover in this case if it goes to jury is money, Langley said. Wow. Past use of force, because they're not going to apologize. They didn't do nothing wrong. Past use of force investigation. In January 2018, a group of officers took Brown to the ground, tased him, arrested him after parking in the damn uh, parking violations at Walgreens, prompted an internal investigation that ended with several officers being suspended and others retrained. <laughs> retrained. Yeah, right. Brown was not charged in the incident. I know he wasn't. He didn't do nothing. The court filings detailed officer statements under oath in depositions and findings from thousands of pages of discovery, including one of the sergeants falsely told internal affairs that he saw a gun in Brown's vehicle, later saying that he must have misspoke when he told that to investigators. No, because that's how they lie on us. All the, usually, they found the gun, they plant the drugs, and when they pull us over, you know, one or the other is going to be found in the car. You know, that's why most black people are very suspicious and very hateful of the police. It has nothing to do with whether we've committed a crime or not. We know they can kill us with impunity. How can you love somebody like that? All you can do is pray that you, you meet a human and not one of these narcissistic, insane, psychopathic, xenophobic, homophobic, racist-ass slave catchers. The first officer who approached Brown said he should have used additional force during the interaction. Other officers said that the first officer escalated the interaction quickly. Several officers said that based on the retraining they received after Brown's arrest, they agreed that they violated Brown's constitutional rights. The latest court filing, which quotes portions of the officer's depositions, includes information about past misconduct investigations into the officers. Langley the rotten, dirty uh, city attorney said he disagreed with Thompson's characterization of the officer's testimony in the case. When Thompson questioned Officer James P. Collins, he read from an internal affairs investigation years earlier that described Collins slamming a woman's head down while giving her four to five thrusts with his forearm, stating that before each thrust, don't kick me, you bitch. Don't kick me, you bitch. One civilian interviewed in that investigation characterized Collins as a cocky officer with as a ticking time bomb. Thompson said, quoting the report while questioning Collins, 
Internal Affairs deemed that Collins had used excessive force in that case. See, we don't need these people on the force. We don't need these drug addicts, these people that's in bad marriages um, and uh, leading domestic violence, probably against their wives, coming to the police force to take all the hostility and anger out on the citizens, more specifically the black citizens. A re related internal affairs memo written to a then acting captain, now retired, noted that Collins had used 11 use of force incidents within two years. The memo recommended that Collins get more training in communication and arrest tactics, which Collins said he received. The partial disposition did not provide a, the exact time or frame for this memo. Video of Brown's arrest showed Collins stepping on Brown's ankles after the athlete was shocked with the taser. He also recorded calling for overtime pay, singing, money, 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 before falling asleep in his squad car for almost 15 minutes, according to the lawsuit. This is disgusting. In his deposition, Collins denied stepping on Brown's foot. And there's a video right here with, him, with his foot right on the ankle of Brown. I put my foot against his leg to prevent him from kicking anyone anymore. I did not step on his leg. I did not stomp on his leg. In the same deposition, Collins said he was told by the city in retraining that he used unreasonable force by stepping on Brown, Thompson said. Then said, but you don't believe that? No, Collins said. This dude should be fired. I'm not trying to be funny, but he got to go. Ten months after Brown's arrest, Collins was involved in an incident when a van was towed in a drunken driving case and a four-year-old girl was still inside the van. And he left the van in the overnight parking lot in 18 degree weather. Then he received a 35 day suspension for that shit. He should have been fired. He is under a last chance agreement for the next two years. If Colin does not follow the terms of the agreement, he faces firing. A journal signal records request for the tow lot reports and video was denied again last week. But police officials citing a pending internal investigation. Joseph Grams, who was the first to confront Brown outside Walgreens and call for a backup, said after the retraining that he believes he should have used more force on Brown. At the training, I don't think they said I did anything wrong. We talked about what happened on the body camera, what happened at the scene, Graham said in a deposition. I handled it the way I handled it, and I don't think I did anything wrong. 